welcome to the next instalment of our What's Stopping You series. So this is where we're looking at various topics and themes of things that are essentially stopping a marketer take their marketing to the next level. And so today we're looking at what's stopping you from sending better campaigns. And so why are we looking at the topic of campaigns? Well, we know that marketers are still sending far too many campaigns that are just generic, are the same messages to all of their customers, and that's just not going to cut it in 2023. Um, we know that because customers now are far more data savvy than they ever have been, and they then expect brands to use that data to send them marketing messages that make sense. And then also, you know, customers aren't inherently loyal to brands, you know, competitors are just simply a click away so you really have to think about earning that loyalty and so sending them the right campaigns is one of the things that can help you achieve that so we're going to then discuss today maybe some of the blockers that marketers might be facing and then look at some ideas and advice on essentially how marketers can start sending better campaigns than they do currently so i have tom my colleague tom clark joining me today who is a senior account executive here at red eye and you work on campaigns day to day for some of the biggest sports retailers and outdoor clothing brands. Um, and so Tom is the perfect person for this conversation around campaigns because you help uh, our clients with campaign strategies, campaign recommendations, building those campaigns, optimization, so everything there. Um, and also uh, you're quite interested in AI as well and how that can help marketers. So I'm sure we'll weave in AI and how that can help sort of you know, enhance campaigns or people send better campaigns as well. So thank you for joining us, Tom. No problem. Okay, so, so the essence of then of this conversation is to think about how can we then help uh, marketers send better campaigns. So let's just start with what do we actually mean by better campaigns? Exactly, I think that's it's definitely a good place to start. So I think, um, yeah, I think personalisation, like you mentioned, I think is huge in this day and age. And I think that's to the point of, you know, including sort of first names within emails and also extending to the point of, you know, sending the right message to the right customer at the right time, which is also personalization in itself. Um, but I think, yeah, what defines a good campaign is making sure, you know, that there is the right message to the right customer at the right time and basically making sure that, you know, you, you include all the recommended personalization details and recommended products for that customer. Um, basically, trying to tailor that email to make it as much of a, a sort of one to one email, if you like, um, for each individual customer as you can. So, essentially, good campaigns equals personalised campaigns. Yeah. Okay, so then what do we think are some of the reasons why people and marketers might struggle to send personalised campaigns? Yeah, so I think what we've seen is one of the main reasons is making sure the data is in a good place, really. Uh, I know with the sort of ramp up of sort of yeah, collecting all these sort of personal details and stuff over the past couple of years. I think a lot of marketers sort of find themselves whether in a place where they've got all this data, um, but it's all sort of, you know, on different pages essentially, and they're not sort of where, sure where to go to get different pieces, how they can link them all up, how they can sort of use them in the campaigns. And I think that's where the, the sort of struggle comes in. I think it's all about sort of making sure everyone's on the same page to, to sort of use that data essentially. Yeah, so everything data, sort of maybe thinking that they don't have enough data, the lack of understanding of how to use it, you know, the time resources of working with the data, quite a lot of yeah, issues yeah. around data there. Um, so then what would you then say, how can someone get the most out of the data that they have then? Yeah, so I think obviously like we're saying with all the sort of this, this whole sort of um, overarching sort of um, picture in terms of data and how it's all sort of work. Um, and I think mainly because it's sort of custom per sort of, you know, every every sort of brand has got a different sort of data set up. I think it's hard to sort of nail down exactly what you need um, and exactly how to sort of structure that and, and sort of use it in a sense. Um, and I think one of the, the sort of key points is basically to make a data dictionary, uh, have a sort of data dictionary, which is a one-stop shop for all of your sort of data needs where you can use all these different sort of touch points of data and just basically making sure everyone in the business is on the same page in terms of this is what we're capturing, this is what we can utilise and this is what's available in our remit basically. So you would say that data dictionary is then a must have then for yeah. you know e-commerce brands to get set up to really kind of ensure that they can send better personalised campaigns. Indeed, yeah, I think it's, it's all about sort of having that sort of central place really that, you know, you can refer back to and you can sort of use it when you're sort of planning out your sort of spending strategy and different campaigns and stuff like that. Just having it there is a bit of a bible, if you like, of all these different sort of data touch points and making sure everyone's on the same page to sort of go, yeah, we need to use this sort of piece of data, how can we power, you know, how can we power this sort of story, for example, you can refer back to that document, make sure you've got all the sort of data you need to power that and sort of look at how you can plan that out. Sense. 
Yeah, okay. And you just touched on there on sending strategy, so I think that's something good to, to talk about because actually um, when then we think about campaigns, you know, some people might be thinking, actually, you know, am I sending enough? Am I not sending? Am I sending too many? So what would you sort of say around when people think about frequency? Yeah, definitely. I think frequency plays a big factor, especially in terms of, you know, growing on subscribe rates and stuff like that. I think, you know, to sort of combat that, definitely having a sort of a sending strategy plan that incorporates, you know, the most engaged customers are receiving the majority of emails, so the least engaged customers are receiving maybe sort of one every fortnight, but a strong sort of deal and an offer that's targeted towards them, basically. Um, I think there's a few different tools you can use, um, such as like PFM within the sort of Red Eye platform, uh, which is Prediction Frequency Manager. So essentially, this will classify all your different customers into these different groups, if you like, with your sort of most engaged on one side, least engaged on the other side, and you can sort of develop your sending strategy around to sort of tailor that. Make sure you're not sort of over bombarding customers on the sort of lower engaged end of the scale, but also understand that these customers are still sort of engaged with your brand. They might just not want to see an email sort of every, every day, for example. Mm. So that's the first little bit of AI then you think that Indeed. marketers should be getting used to predictive frequency yeah. management. Yeah, I think, like you say, I think the, the sort of AI that's sort of utilised in the background there does a great job sort of connecting all these different sort of touch points in terms of, you know, sort of when customers are clicking on campaigns, or sort of when they're opening campaigns. All these different bits and pieces that can tie together and say, well, this customer wants to receive an email sort of every day, this customer might want to receive it every fortnight, and then that will help you to sort of develop your sending strategy without too much um, sort of resource heavy sort of analysis and stuff like that as well. Yeah. And I think with frequency, marketers can actually be quite worried to reduce frequency, whether it's overall or to some customers, because they actually instantly think, well, if I'm sending less campaigns, that means I'm going to get less revenue. But that isn't always the case, is yeah. it? Because actually, some customers who might be willing to spend more with you, you can actually email them more. And actually then you have to watch then those customers that actually maybe require a lesser frequency that you are making sure you're not emailing them too much so they don't get that sort of dreaded unsubscribe. That's it. I think that's that's the key really, I think in terms of avoiding your unsubscribe, making sure that you understand the sort of value of the customer record really. So yeah, basically pushing that forward to understand that these customers are still engaged with your brand. They still want to sort of spend money with you. They still sort of browse on the site. Um, but they might, might not, email might not be the channel for them, for example, they might want to move on to, you know, SMS, web pushes, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's understanding that, you know, to reduce the unsubscribe rate doesn't necessarily mean um, you sort of having to stop emailing customers and bits like that. It's just tailoring the frequency to the right, um, yeah, to the right message, really. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, you know, t touched on it there, thinking about other channels as well is really, is really, really nice. So Indeed. Um, okay, so then we've talked about sort of, you know, like the... Um, using the data and sort of like the frequency of the campaigns let's then talk about actually the content within the campaigns themselves so um what would you say if somebody thinks that they don't have enough data to really personalize the content within campaigns yeah so i think uh, i think a lot of people find themselves in that position at the moment especially um so i think there's, a, there's definitely a few um few tools and sort of methods you can use to start capturing that personalized data basically and um, to get yourself in a position where you can start to power these sort of more personalized campaigns um, so I think the first suggestion I'd give is sort of competition emails. Um, so pushing out like a competition when applicable and um, sort of utilising that opportunity basically to pull in um, sort of relevant customer details that you can then further personalise their content with. Um, and so, yeah, you can do things like if you're getting sort of addresses, you can sort of tailor the emails with different like their closest store, for example, if you're looking at retail bits and pieces. Um, so I think competitions are definitely a great way to sort of start to get some of that data. Um, whereas I think the more encompassing side is definitely preference centers. So having a push within your preference center, for example, pushing that within your welcome emails, so sort of within the brand sign up, and sort of either giving the customer like an incentive to sort of give you this information back, and whether that's like a percentage off or just with the messaging of, you know, if you let us know these details, we can further sort of recommend um, sort of specific items to you and things like that. So it's definitely, in terms of preferences, it's, it's more of a two-way relationship, I believe, between the customer and the business. Mm -hmm. um, to sort of yeah have that relationship so yeah and I think you know I said using all that preference data then or web data you know you know unique data collected through competitions you know as much as a marketer can use that to then personalize the campaigns and make it you know messages that make sense to them really um but obviously you know if we're saying then all of these different pieces of data that marketers should use to sort of personalize their campaigns you know all of the little elements within an email like, 
let alone the segment and everything. That can be quite scary for a marketer. And if we think way back when, when we first started our email marketing jobs, you know, just sending that one same message to everyone to a segment might even be in a couple of hundred was scary enough. Absolutely. And now we're saying to a marketer, think about all of these data points, you know, to personalize your emails. So, you know, marketers can be worried about that and they can be worried about like trusting that it will personalize at scale. So what would you say to marketers that might be worried about that? Yeah, so I think, thankfully, I think with, with this sort of, you know, as technologies come on, we can rely a little bit more upon the sort of systems to sort of, you know, differentiate between um, sort of dynamic content and pieces like that to sort of, you know, further personalise these emails, basically. It doesn't have to be as scary as, you know, sort of building out a million different email copies with all these different personalisation features in. It can be as simple as, you know, once you can understand your data, just basically trusting the system and the algorithms to make sure that this data is being pulled through correctly um, and basically, yeah, taking taking a lot of the sort of time intensive resources out of um, personalising them emails, basically. So really sort of trusting the, the tech. That's it, yeah, using it definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so now let's talk testing. What uh, are your thoughts on how marketers should be using testing to send better campaigns? Yeah, so I always recommend like testing. I think it's crucial in terms of the sort of overall sort of sending strategy. I think it should be worked in and um, get quite closely with the sort of BAU sends that everybody's doing. Um, but yeah, I think I'd, I'd usually recommend people to sort of test at least once a month. Uh, sort of send that one campaign with a sort of test on once a month. Something you can sort of learn and take forward then as a, a sort of um, yeah, piece to sort of start improving campaigns and be getting feedback, I guess, from, from that side. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend at least once a month, but usually I'd say a couple of times a week would be sort of perfect. Um, and that's what you'd be able to sort of yeah, take forward and sort of get the maximum sort of learnings off the back of it, basically. Um, what are some of the things that people should be testing then? Yeah, so I think some of the uh, interesting tests we've seen, for example, um, there's a couple. Um, one interesting one we've seen is just as simple as testing uh, like CTA buttons. Um, so having like a rectangle CTA button, which is fairly uh, sort of standard to go into sort of rounding off those corners. Um, and in the past, there's a couple of tests that we've, we've done similar to that. And um, we've seen about 23% uplift in sort of clicks through those um, sort of call to action buttons, which when you think about such a small change, it's, uh, it's impressive to see really that you get such different results based on something so small. Yeah. Um, and then another example, I guess, would be sort of the use of emojis. Um, I know sort of recently with um, more brands sort of going down that sort of tonality of having a bit of sort of tongue-in-cheek sort of tone with the sort of uh, email copy and stuff like that. I think starting to sort of play around with your brand wording and sort of including emojis within the subject lines, because the subject lines are obviously the first sort of port of call within the inbox themselves as well. Um, so testing, yeah, no emoji versus emoji, or even just different types of emojis, for example. Um, and I know there's an example we've uh, seen with like, a, with like a fishing email, for example, where including like a, a emoji of a fish versus the emoji of like a fishing rod and sort of seeing the results between the sort of differences of them. It's, uh, it's impressive to see that such, such small differences can make, uh, can make a, a vast difference, really. Yeah. Well, everyone reacts and responds to different imagery, different messaging and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, it literally is just, you know, thinking about what can you test. That's um, and, yeah, I think testing is one of the most, you know, underutilised things that the marketers can do. And especially you were saying about the subject line, you know, you can craft a beautifully, beautifully designed email, an amazing copy within there, your best offers. But if nobody's even opened the email in the first place, you know, so testing that to get, you know, your open rate improving, I think exactly. that's, uh, is a good place to start. But yeah, I think, you know, not enough marketers do testing. I think they worry too much about the fails of the test versus yeah. the learnings that they can get off of it as well. That's so. it, yeah. I know, I think that's, that's what puts a lot of people off testing really. It's like you say, I think the idea of, you know, if one half of your test has not worked or has failed, um, then you're only going to get 50% of, of your revenue that you would get anyway, which isn't necessarily the truth. Um, there's a few different tools you can use, I know, within the Red Eye platform ourselves. We've got a couple of different A-B testing tools. Um, one of those will allow you to basically send sort of 25% of your sort of segment to one variant, 25% to another variant, and then depending on which the winner is after a set amount of time, whether that's sort of four hours, eight hours, and um, you can then go on to send that remaining 50% onto the sort of winning variant. So it'll minimise the risks in terms of losing out on any revenue or any sort of engagement and pieces like that, really. Yeah, that's a really good idea, minimising that risk, mm -hmm. isn't it? So, um, so if we then think about campaigns then as a whole, so what would you say are some of the must-have automated campaigns that e-commerce brands should have up? Yeah, so I think um, yeah, I think starting at the top of the funnel, the sort of crucial one is definitely the sort of welcome campaign. 
because uh, even though it's not a sort of direct sort of conversion um, sort of type of campaign, I guess, it's just important to sort of set the tone, introduce the brand, like we were saying before, sort of pushing preference centers within there to sort of further tailor the emails once the customer's sort of onboarded. Um, so I think, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely say welcome is definitely the top of the list, sort of nailing down like a three-stage welcome that pushes out, you know, this is what you're, the, this is basically laying out the expectations for what they're going to be receiving, as well as sort of getting information back to have that sort of two-way relationship of, you know, if we know more preferences about yourself and know more of your preferences, we can tailor content better to, to yourself and sort of give you better recommendations, really. It's that first impression, isn't it? It's that first impression that counts it. so much, whether that's somebody who's just subscribed, subscribed to your newsletter or made that first purchase, is that that first impression? That's it, definitely. And I think, yeah, like you say, once you've sort of yeah, got that first impression, sort of and nailed that down, I think it's then sort of moving on to sort of abandoned basket campaigns and more of the sort of on-site behaviours. So, like I say, abandoned basket, abandoned category, abandoned search, and sort of nailing down that sort of um, the funnel of abandonment, I guess. So everywhere, everywhere from sort of, yeah, a search query on the website, everything through to sort of adding into your basket and just sort of keeping an eye along the way, making sure that everybody's sort of, you know, there's no issues in terms of, you know, come back, we still still got your items sort of thing. Um, and then, yeah, potentially sort of offering incentives within sort of down the line within, within the abandonments as well. Mm, yeah, that's one tip that I have heard actually as well, where a lot of people think in that first abandonment email, they should put their discount code to really entice somebody back. But actually, if somebody is going to be willing to purchase, they probably will do off that first email. So you want to save your discount codes to actually maybe the second or the third abandoned email if you have like a more team stage abandonment journey as Definitely. well. So you know, then somebody who might have been willing to pay full price is not then, you're not losing the revenue by them using the discount that might not need it to. Exactly, that's it. And I think, um, I think yeah, more of what we've seen recently as well is in terms of customer behaviour and the sort of expectations that they've got. I think a lot of people sort of expect to get these abandonment emails with um, sort of discount codes in. So I think a lot of the time you get people sort of looking to trigger these emails um, and sort of to looking to get that code. So like you're saying, if you store that a couple of sort of stages down in the process, you'll get more people sort of buying it at sort of full price without without discounts as well. Yeah, definitely. So there's some um, great sort of um, general, let's say, life cycle campaigns that uh, brands might have up and running. What would you say if they want to try and think of some new ideas that may be unique to their brand or, or something new and exciting from a campaign perspective? Yeah, definitely. I think there's um, there's yeah there's a whole host of options really. Um, but the main I say the main two that I recommend is definitely looking around the sort of industry, looking what the people are doing. So, I think having a good sort of review of competitors, for example, making sure that you know you're either on par or sort of doing doing similar things to your competitors and sort of testing out whether that works for yourself as well. Um, and basically, yeah, just having a bit of a feel around the industry really for any sort of new ideas that are being thrown out all the time, and sort of just testing them for yourself and making sure that you know. These ideas might sort of help your own brand and making sure that it all sort of aligns with your, your sort of mission goals and stuff like that as well. And um, there's a whole host of ideas that are always sort of thrown around in the industry, everyone's sort of testing new things. So it's about just keeping your eye out and just making sure you know you're, you're keeping your eye on your own inboxes as well. Sort of anything you can see that's you know interesting, trying to sort of replicate that and even better that as well from, from that perspective. I think that's a really good point that a lot of us always forget as well as marketers. We are consumers ourselves. Exactly. We are subscribed to so many different other retailers and things like that. And I think that's when, you know, look outside of just your core competitors then, isn't it? Like, yeah. who do you purchase with? Um, you know, and, and can you learn from a different industry? If you're a retailer, it doesn't mean that you can't learn and take a campaign idea up maybe a travel, you know, that's a travel brand. So. Definitely, definitely. I think, yeah, I think alongside that as well, sort of, you know, using some of these ideas that you're seeing sort of thrown around in your own inboxes and stuff and sort of integrating it with a bit of um, sort of the AI tools that come about. So I know there's a, there's a number of AI tools where you can sort of feed in information, whether, you know, feeding in sort of KPIs that you need to meet or any specific goals for the year. For example, if you're looking for a specific, you know, for example, preferences, if you're looking to sort of pull preferences, you can go to some of these AI tools to sort of generate some new sort of content ideas as well as campaign ideas. And they're really sort of tailored towards your brand and the sort of context for yourself as well. And um, I think that's only going to be something that's going to be growing and we'll see more of in, in time to come. Yes, yeah, so that's another way that marketers can use AI to then help them more with ideas and, and, and be more efficient and, and things like that. So, yeah. Definitely. All right, well, I suppose then on to our final question. Um, then, so if we want to wrap it, wrap it all up then, if a marketer, you know, was looking to get more out of automation and more out of personalization to sort of start sending better campaigns, what would you say are the top three pieces of advice? 
Yeah, so I think um, it definitely yeah, there's definitely three pieces of advice they can give. I think the the first one, which is key really, is laying that sort of initial foundation. So making sure you're choosing a platform and the sort of, you know the platform that sort of works for yourself, and making sure it fits all your business goals, and it's and most importantly it can scale with you as well. So making sure that in time to come it's going to be still be the right solution for yourself. So just having that sort of underlying foundation of a good platform um, will sort of yeah. We'll work wonders in terms of power and all these good campaigns and personalization and sort of moving forward to a, a future prospect, really. Mm -hmm. So, I think off the back of that, I think um, again, mentioning sort of testing, I think testing is really important when it comes to um, sort of the, the top three tips, if you like. So, having a clear and concise sort of testing plan, making sure it's being worked into your sort of BAU campaigns and not just sort of like a sort of you know, every now and again, we'll sort of you know, do a, a sort of test. I think. Yeah, doing a couple of tests a week is, is sort of crucial to sort of learning and, and moving forward really off the back of that. Um, and then again, I think coming back to the sort of AI topic, I think as AI sort of grows and obviously all the sort of, it's the sort of topic of conversation at the moment, I guess, is we're going to see it more ingrained within sort of marketers' roles and the sort of daily lives in terms of, like I say, generating content. And so if we go into that picture of having like a one-to-one -one email with each individual customer really and making it tailored to that individual. So I think they're I think they're definitely the main three, and I think AI is definitely um, something to keep an eye on as mm -hmm. moving forward. Definitely. Yeah. So making sure you've got the right technology to be able to send all these amazing campaigns. Um, test, test, test. So you are constantly, you know, sending the best that you can do, and then just really looking into AI. Like, don't be afraid of AI. Think how AI can really help you as a marketer definitely. and all of these things. So, definitely. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much no for coming all. and chatting all things campaigns with us today. Uh, I hope everyone that's watching this then can take away some really good ideas on how they can start sending better campaigns. Indeed. So thank you. That's been a pleasure.